the sequel that nobody asked for to a movie that nobody really remembers, but they made it anyway. So let's talk about Dave Bautista in My Spy, The Eternal City. guys, Dan here. This is Dan Reviews It. Welcome to my movie review for the new Prime Video film, My Spy, The Eternal City. This is a sequel to the 2020 film, My Spy, uh, which I don't think I've ever heard anyone even talk about. Um, but it came out at uh, a time when, when COVID had just hit, so theaters were closed. It was supposed to be uh, a, a big, you know, theatrical release for Dave Bautista, um, but it got, you know, obviously canceled in theaters and Prime Video uh, bought the rights. And I guess it made enough of a splash, uh, you know, while people were stuck in their houses that uh, they decided to greenlight a sequel. And there's uh, many people that returned from the original, but uh, there's some new faces involved here as well, including Anna Ferris, uh, who I don't think we've seen in in a couple of years, right? Um, the last, well, she wasn't even in the last season of Mom, but uh, I, I think that was the last time I remember seeing her. But anyway, uh, before we launch any further into the specifics of this film, let me first welcome you into Damn Reviews. And thank you for finding this video. We do movie and TV reviews on the channel. And yes, I do have a review up for My Spy from back in 2020. Uh, so you can check that out. I will link that uh, to the end of this video if you want to really get the complete My Spy review here. Uh, but please consider subscribing. Click that like button and comment below. All that stuff, of course, helps the channel out. All right, so I really did not even give My Spy a second thought after I watched it. It was okay. I gave it a C. Um, but uh, did I ever think that I wanted to see more of uh, these characters? Not particularly. Uh, however, I will say um, that if I remember correctly, I didn't go back and watch my original review. I just kind of looked at my grade. But if I remember, um, you know, I, I liked the chemistry between the two leads, which is Batista and Chloe Coleman, who uh, had her film debut with My Spy. You know, it's kind of a bummer. This, this girl who at the time was probably uh, 10 or something um, or 11 was you know, probably really jazzed. Oh my God, you know, my, my premiere movie, it's with Dave Bautista and uh, Ken Jeong is in it and it's going to be on the big screen and then COVID happened. So, you know, that, that's a bit of a bummer. But uh, in the years that followed, she has certainly seen herself on the big screen in things like Dungeons and Dragons, Honor Among Thieves and 65 with Adam Driver. So she's got a, you know, a few movies now under her belt, but she reunites here as uh, a teenager that Dave Bautista is uh, watching. Kristen Schaal uh, is back as well, and I mentioned Ken Jeong. Some new people, uh, not just Anna Ferris, but you've got uh, Flew LeBorg and Craig Robinson as well joining the main cast. And uh, so the essential uh, premise here is JJ, which is the Bautista character. He is uh, persuaded to accompany Sophie on her school trip to Italy. And uh, there they become involved in a uh, terrorist plot. This was directed by Pete Siegel, who did direct the first movie, but also um, has directed comedy films going back to the 90s. He directed the third installment of the Naked Gun series. He did a couple of the Adam Sandler movies along the way, including The Longest Yard, uh, and then, you know, the original My Spy. And then the writers from that first movie came back as well to uh, write this one. So these movies are, uh, you know, and this isn't really going to be a review for, for both movies at once because I, I barely remember the first movie. But, um, you know, uh, these these types of movies, I should say, um, you know, the the kind of um, let's team the, you know, the big muscled guy who, you know, has come from a world of, you know, wrestling or MMA or whatever, you know, the, the, the rock did it and John Cena has done it, um, you know, so, OK, let's give Dave Batista his chance now at. This, uh, you know, family friendly, you know, set him up with a, a cute girl um, kind of plot. And, you know, it'll be action heavy, but it'll also be cute and funny and, and family friendly and all of this. Um, but these movies are rated PG-13, which I think um, might be one issue with it. Um, because when I think about, you know, those other guys I mentioned, like, you know, the Tooth Fairy with The Rock, that was PG. Um, the What was the one with the fire company uh, playing with fire? Is that what that was called? Uh, with John Cena, PG. Um, and so, you know, yeah, in, in all of the paces... They do the family-friendly movie, but it's actually family-friendly. And both of these movies, um, you know, aren't necessarily, like, way over the top with, 
um, you know, potty humor or sex talk or anything like that, really. I think it's just maybe the action sequences might be a little intense for young kids. I don't know. Um, and in that respect, it's, it's maybe more action oriented than, uh, silly or comedic as some of those other movies I mentioned. Um, so that, you know, that could be one issue, but I think the biggest issue that this movie has, well, okay, uh, let me, let me say a positive. I do think that the, um, chemistry between Batista and Chloe Coleman, um, is, is still good. You know, they're, they're cute together. Um, you know, I, I really like their interactions. You know, he's, supposed to be real stuffy, but he's trying in this installment to, um, you know, make her and her friends think that he's really cool because now that she's, you know, 14 or 15 or whatever, she wants nothing to do with him. Uh, but she's also trying to kind of get her first kiss and her first boyfriend or whatever. And so she likes this one boy that's on the trip. And so he's got to try and be Mr. Cool. And those kind of parts are enjoyable. And that's about the only enjoyable part of the movie is that those kind of interactions, everything else is just so um, routine to this type of movie, like Spy Kids and, and a lot of these other, um, you know, movies and franchises that we've had over the last, you know, 20 years or so. Um, and Spy Kids maybe kind of kicked that off. You know, there were a handful of them that came after, you know, Agent Cody Banks. I think that came after Spy Kids. But anyway, th there's been a few. Um, but anyway, the acting here uh, is so badly over the top. Ken Jeong... Um, look, he's not a good actor. He might be a good comedic actor. We've seen this in Community and the Hangover series or whatever. And he obviously plays the buffoon on The Masked Singer. That's, you know, a very popular show on my channel. I review and recap The Masked Singer episodes every, every uh, week that there's a new one. And, you know, Ken Jeong, he, he, he's paid to play, he's paid to play the idiot, uh, on that show. And he does that. Here, they're trying to give him these, like, moments of dramatic heft, and it's, horrible, horrible acting. He's just not equipped for it. It is not in his repertoire. Uh, you know, he's an okay comedic actor with the right material, uh, but he is a terrible dramatic actor. Um, and, and the same could be said with some of the other people here. Christian, Kristen Shaw, you know, they're, they're trying to get her to, um, you know, maybe be the voice of reason or whatever. And she, I think at this point is so associated with Bob's burgers, um, that, you just kind of hear her character coming out all the time, um, you know, because she's just kind of using her, her real voice for Bob's Burgers. She's not putting on an accent or anything. Um, so that that's kind of a miss. And then Flulaborg, look, I, I just, I don't get him. Uh, they, they've put him in several movies now, Hollywood has, um, and, and tried to make it work. He was in, I think, one of the Pitch Perfects or something. Um, and he just does not work for me comedically at all. Uh, I know Conan O'Brien's a big fan of his, and I love Conan, but I, I just don't get him. So he was a waste in this. Um, and just uh, everything about the plot and um, the action sequences, it's all very, very, very routine. I will say, again, as a positive, that Batista... Look, he's trying his best here with the material. He's he's really, um, you know, giving it his all. And his, uh, you know, partnership here with, with Chloe Coleman, I think it works here like it did in the first movie. But everything else about this uh, just reeks of, like, why did they make a sequel to a movie that no one even cares about in the first place? I don't know. Uh, but whatever. Uh, I believe My Spy, the, what is it called? The Eternal City? All right, I, I hate that title too. Uh, uh, oh, and Anna Ferris. I didn't really talk about her. She's fine here. Um, you know, I, I, I do miss seeing her in things, so that's fine. But uh, I give The Eternal City a D+. Plus. If you are curious, though, you can check it out on Amazon Prime. Thank you so much for watching Dan Reviews It. We'll see you next time. Bye.